Hey up YouTube, not down the allotment today as much as I want to. Unfortunately, Crohn's flare up has meant that I need to stay at home today. Um, so what I'm gonna do for you today, I've just got the old jotter out, and I'm gonna do a video early, um, a little earlier than I wanted. I'm gonna do, looking forward to March which we all should be really it's, it's you know the time when we really get the feeling that we're getting going so we're going to be going over things you can sew indoors and out uh, jobs important jobs for march uh, and i'm going to do all that i'm going to talk over me potting up uh, some of my chilies which the missus is going to love because i'm going to make a wonderful mess because my potting tray is down on the allotment needs doing some of them are, are getting far too big um so yeah, guys, if uh, I, I hope you like the sounds of that. <laughs> it's not what I planned to do. I, it's really not. But um, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button, that bell icon next to the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up. It's, it's you know, I feel lousy. It's make me feel better, please, guys. Um, and I'll, I'll get on with the video. See you in a minute. Okay guys, so hopefully this is recording, I've got no idea. I'm playing about with my first ever attempt at using a separate sound recording software. So anyway, what are we doing? Well, as you can see, hopefully, uh, on the background, I am potting up my chili plants, which I did the first potting up of in a live stream, which there is more live streams to come, guys. I'm going to do them once a month. I think uh, I think that's quite regularly enough for you to sit and come and look at my face for an hour or two and uh, and have a chat. Anyway, so whilst I'm there potting up those chilies, um, I'm going to be talking about looking forward to March. Really, it's the prime time of year for us growers. It's where uh, most of our I say most far. It's where we start, really. It's where things really start to to uh, to heat up for us, um, especially for those of us that have the ability to grow things at home. At least as far as I'm concerned, anyway. So we're going to start with sowing and planting, really. So things you can be showing both in home, obviously I'll I'll, I'll talk about indoors and outdoors, uh, both plants and seeds that you can be sowing from the beginning of March. Though I will start with something that I'm really looking forward to getting and, 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 and really looking forward to it turning up, and that is my asparagus crowns. March is the best March is when to be putting your asparagus crowns in and when to be starting them off. There will be a video dedicated to putting those in. Um, it'll probably come as a bite size because it's not a long subject, I don't know, we'll see how long it is when I finish recording it. But there is a video coming on that once I put my crowns in because there is a technique to putting those in. It's not just sort of put them in and bury them. There's certain things they don't like and if you want to make the best of your asparagus crowns then you need to be doing something a little bit different. It's your last chance in March to be sowing your fruit trees, your bushes, uh, your onion seeds, really, and uh, your garlic. It really is your last time for garlic. Um, it, it needs time to get a bit of cold on it. Uh, some people do and don't, don't believe this. I do believe that it requires a frost for the bulb to split. Some people say it doesn't. Some people say it do. Make your own mind up. But March is the last time, really you can be putting garlic in outdoors. March is a good time to be starting planning your herb beds. There are things that you can sow, there are herbs that you can sow directly outdoors at this time of year. Things such as chives, coriander, dill, parsley are all quite tolerant to cold weather. However, if there is a frost forecast, I do strongly recommend that you were uh, cover these things up with a fleece 
but they will be can be sown directly outside now in March for them to uh, for them to be grown on through summer. Other things that can be sown outside at this time of year, uh, I've not really got any types on this in my book in my notes. I've done it for the indoor stuff. I think really I haven't done it for the outdoor stuff because there's not a great deal I saw directly outdoors. But things you can be still sowing outdoors now. Broad beans. I am going to put some more broad beans in. Uh, they, they are Aqua Dutch Claudia from uh, growseed.co.uk. There's some cabbages that you can sow outside now. Greyhound is one. Uh, there's some reds and some summer. Sorry, I can't think of any names off the top of my head. But there's some reds and some autumn cabbages that can be sown outside now. Things like calabrese can be sown directly outside now. And these are all seeds, by the way, guys. Leeks you can sow outside in your rows now. Onion seeds, not sets. Although you can put sets out now if you want. Personally, especially this year, 2020, it's a little wet. So I wouldn't be doing my sets outside now. If you do have some sets or you want to get some sets... By all means, put them in compost and put them in indoors. But you can put seeds. You can put seeds out now. I would imagine you're a little late, but you can do them now if you really want to, or if you haven't done any. Parsnips. Those can be sown outside now. I am trying parsnips for the first time this year. I recommend doing a process called chitting your parsnip seeds. And all that simply involves, I will once again, when it comes time for me to do my parsnip seeds, I'll do a video on it. But all it is, is a th sowing a single layer of parsnip seeds on some wet kitchen paper. Foldering them, covering them in, in more wet kitchen paper, putting them in a Tupperware box, putting them somewhere dark. Checking them, you can generally leave them for a few days to start with, but checking them every day for the ones that start sprouting. The ones that sprout are the ones that you want to put out. The ones that don't sprout are probably dead seeds. Parsnips are finicky seeds. They're a pain in the arse. Um, so chitting is definitely something that's worthwhile. You can be sowing your peas outside now for an early harvest. Once again, if they once they're up, if you've got a frost forecast, I do recommend covering them. Spinach, spring onions, sprouting broccoli, shallot can go in in March onion sets can go in in March directly outside once again I stress provided it's not too wet and you chittered first early potatoes now this was something I read today and one of my information sources one of my research sources is allotment month by month link in the description below to the book very good now that actually, it surprised me when I read this, but it says you can put out chittered first early potatoes now in March. Personally, I feel that's a bit early. But if you're in a, if you're down south in an area where your frost, the old final frost date is quite early, then by all means, I wouldn't put any potatoes in the ground until at least four to six weeks before my final frost date. But that's just me. I suppose if you're going to protect them, there are things you can do. You can mound them up. You can cover them in straw. You can protect the tops from frost. But if the f tops get frosted off, there's a good chance you will lose that plant. Some people say it will grow on. I've never had experienced it growing on if the tops do get frosted off. So just be aware of that. So in indoors, now then, this is quite an extensive list. So in indoors in March. Now this is where you can really, as a grower, you really be getting your teeth into things. It's like I say, it's it's prime time for us growers. Really, it's it's time to start things. It's time to start things on windowsills, which means that all you growers out there that are new to the game, the ones that don't have the specialist equipment like lights, heat mats, propagators, expensive propagators. Um, you can get away with doing stuff on your windowsills now. So you've got things like aubergines, uh, varieties such as Bonica and Black Beauty. You've got Brussels sprouts. Personal favourite of mine is F1 Crispus. 
Uh, I also do Doric as well. That's an F1 variety. Cabbages. You can be doing Greyhound, Primo 2, Duncan, Red Rocket, Lodero, and Red Drum... I can't read my own writing there. Red Drum Bead, I think that is. Uh, I think this year I'm doing Greyhound, uh, Duncan, and Red Ladero. Not too sure. Cauliflowers. You've seen me already sow some. Snowball Clapton, Romanesco. They can all be sown in March. Cosletices, things like Rosedale, Marvel of Four Seasons can be sown in March. Celeriacs. Celeries, March. I'll be doing mine. Think, uh, what's mine called? Mine's called Pink Blush. Uh, that's the variety I'm trying for this year. It's a self, self blanching variety. Cucumbers, you can start in March. Varieties like Market Mall, which is a an outdoor hardy variety for the UK. Kohlrabi, Luna is a variety that I grew last year. Trying to steer away from growing some this year, but we'll see. Lettuces, I've already mentioned, but things like uh, your little gems, you can start off in March. Tomatoes, you can start in March if you really want to. Personally, I would say wait till the back end of March if you can. Wait until you've got those sunlight levels. Wait until you've got those heat levels. Because as I've said in earlier videos, and as I'm so happy to see other YouTubers now saying... It's all well and good sowing these things early, but if you haven't got the space for them to grow on, don't sow them. Wait until late March, um, April, even May, June. Plants will catch up. It's not a necessity to be sowing these things now. By all means, you can, but just be aware of the space and the maintenance that these plants require as they are growing up and make sure you've got that space available otherwise you're just going to end up wasting plants other things other uh, things to plant out in March as I've already discussed you've got things like your asparagus crowns the other primary one that a lot of allotmenters plant out at this time of year uh, is your strawberries so whether you've bought strawberry uh, plants or whether you've uh, perpetuated your own runners uh, from home. Now is the time to be planting them out from the pots into their final resting places. Jobs to do. Jobs that are left. Jobs that I start doing in March. Every time I visit my plot now, I will get either my um, Wolfgarten soil mill and I will buzz over all my raised beds. Failing that, I will use just a rake and I will rake over all my beds every time I go down to the allotment. It's a five minute job, it keeps weeds down and helps keep that, self, that uh, soil surface to a nice fine tilt. Obviously, once again, don't do it if your beds are soaking wet because you'll end up just putting clods of mud in, but it is something that you can start doing now. You can be starting to apply your, your chemical fertilizers now, things like your 6x, your grow more, things like that. You start sprinkling them on, especially on your uh, overwintered crops like your overwintered onions, uh, any cabbages, beans, um, things like that. You want to be feeding them now with, uh, with fertilizers. In March, you want to be uncovering your forced rhubarb. Uh, that's, that's sort of March, March, April time that that wants to be uncovered. If you want to try for an early crop of strawberries, March is a good time to be covering your strawberries with cloches. This will help obviously increase the temperature around that strawberry, will bring it to flower quicker, thusly will bring it to uh, bring it to bear fruit wise quicker. Bear in mind that if we get a cold or wet spring that you may need to hand pollinate these things. Also March, and this is a must for anybody who's hoping to get some fruits and this is feed your fruit trees and bushes and mulch around the bottom of them they want a good heavy mulch of, of leaf mold or compost obviously not a fresh horse manure but um, they want a good heavy feed now they'll be starting to, to absorb those nutrients in another month or so so it wants to be available for them your pests now 
this is something that I haven't been covering recently because through winter there's not a great deal of pest issues but as we're coming into March things are starting to wake up so you've got your persistent ones like slugs and snails they will start to become more prominent uh, in and around March pigeons obviously they're starting to nest they're looking for food close to home so if like me you're in an allotment plot that's surrounded by trees they're probably nesting in the trees and the cl closer they are to the food the happier they are so but this uh, this is a big one this is the time of year when your cabbage whites start waking up and appearing so keep those cabbages as brussels brussels sprouts as brassicas keep them all covered up and be keeping an eye on your fruits your fruit trees your fruit bushes things like that because now also is when your aphids start waking up so bear that in mind guys those are the things that you want to be keeping an eye on uh, you can't you shouldn't really be doing any winter washing or spraying now um, your fruit trees and bushes will be now awake and coming to life for they're growing they'll be budding so you don't want to be spraying them with winter wash now so just at the end of this video I'm just going to propose or do a little experiment I've got some money maker seeds from uh, prettywildseeds.co.uk it was a promotion they did for free um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do vermiculite sown as you'll see in the video versus just straight compost sown I'm going to see if it, if it creates anything different they're getting treated exactly the same guys I've sown them one's been covered over with compost one's been covered over with vermiculite they've gone in the same gravel tray they're going in the same propagator under the same lights and receiving the same heat so it's just a little bit of fun these seeds were free it wasn't a variety of tomato that I plan on growing chances are the majority of them are going to get given away but I just wanted to give it a go I got these seeds free from prettywildseeds.co.uk I will say the seeds themselves they were a little bit furry I wasn't too keen on them they didn't look like they had been washed very well but we'll see we'll see how they germinate and we'll see whether or not vermiculite versus uh, non vermiculite compost because also the compost that's in the trays as you guys can see in the video one is mixed with vermiculite and has a topping of top dressing of vermiculite the other no vermiculite at all none in the compost and not top dressed with vermiculite and we're going to see what difference that makes they're going to be receiving the same water in the same way and everything so just a bit of fun so you'll be able to follow along with them so until next time guys please if you like the video please subscribe hit that like button it means a lot I'm sorry I wasn't able to get down the allotment this week. I just couldn't leave home. I shan't bore you with the ins and outs or disgust you with the ins and outs. Um, but I couldn't leave home. I had to stay home. So this isn't the video I wanted to do. Hopefully you like it. Like I said, please subscribe. It's a big help to all of us here at Conversation Shed. Happy growing. And I wish you all the best for March. So... Until next time, folks, I'll see you later.